It is not in the still calm of life or the repose of a pacific station that great characters are formed. The habits of a vigorous mind are formed in contending with difficulties, said former First Lady of the United States, Abigail Adams. 32-year-old Stephen Osea has had his fair share of life challenges due to his stature. He lives with dwarfism and for the last three decades, he has been pursuing education so passionately. One of the greatest minds of his class, Osea was sent to a children's home by his parents due to subtle pressures. He was an outcast. He did not know though why he had to be taken to Magodo Children's Home in Uhuru Estate even though his parents were alive. His father later passed on. He scored 441 marks out of a possible 500 marks in KCPE to remind the top student at Magodo Complex Primary School and got admission at Tare Boys Center and School. Thank God so far it has not been easy but I thank God that I've come to this place at this particular moment I've achieved. It is a very great achievement in my life and also in my community because as far as I'm concerned in our local area, I have not seen anybody like me or uh, because I'm, I'm one of a kind in this, that area, so I'm the only one like this and I have managed to reach this particular place and at this particular moment. I'm so happy and I'm so grateful because the journey of my life has been so difficult just to, to visit uh, at least. When we look back, uh, been, uh, there are some days I spent at the children's home. There are some days I had to spend in, on the streets. And in the children's home, I was spending my days there because I had nowhere to go and uh, nobody was really willing to welcome me. And my mom actually, she, because she had nothing to do and the pressure from the society regarding my being the way I am. So she had to take me there, to stay there. So I did my education there. And sometimes also, after coming from there, life has not been easy. But I thank God that I've made it up to this place. I qualified, to I qualified for Staray Boys Center, but I was not able to join because I had nobody to stand in for me to go there. So I just had to continue my education at the children's home and partly at a secondary school in Kayole called the Kayole Twilight. I, but basically most of my life I did in, in the children's home. Is it where you start your KCC exam? That's why I sat for my KCC exam and my class 8 too. What, what did you score in KCC? I scored a total marks of 441 marks out of 500. Yes, 41 out of 500. I was supposed to join Kistare, but I never joined because of the financial constraints. Nobody was there to support me. So I just chose to continue my life at the children's home. Yeah, at some point I left and went to Twilight Secondary School in Kayole. Yeah, I did my two years there, then I, also, then I, I went again back to the children's home, yes. I left too late because I had nobody to, uh, I had, there was someone who actually volunteered to support. And I had to leave the children's home because also life at the children's home is not easy. So, but when you don't have any other option, when somebody offers to help you, then you say, let me go. Because sometimes you can refuse. Then uh, you, get, you, get, you go and meet problems there. Then the person will say, I told you to come, you refused. So I had to, to join that person in Kayole. I stayed with him for two years, but later on, that person left, so I had nowhere to go. Unfortunately, he could not raise the required school fees to secure his chance. Consequently, he transitioned to the second school in the children's home. He emerged top student in the children's home after scoring a C plus in KCSE. While visiting his uncle in Tanzania, he joined from five and six. He later secured admission at Tumain University in Dar es Salaam to pursue a bachelor's degree in business administration. We were four in a house. I was with my cousin. I was with some two friends from the same school. So that person was supporting me directly, but abruptly stopped. Yeah. You never explained. I never saw him. <laughs> so I just went back. I just went and pleaded with the owner of the home. Then he told me, yeah, we can, you can just come back, no problem. Then, now I gave myself there, then How completed. 
High school was. Are the children something like special? Life is never easy, but uh, I was mainly focusing on education. Yes, challenges were there. No, no, there's no place which is comfortable, but I had to persevere because I was looking for education. So you start for your case, you see here at, at the children's At the KCC children's, KCC the mm, yes. What did you score? I scored a C plus. A C plus? Yes. That's a minimum university entry grade, eh? Yes. So were you able to join a high uh, university, a college, or a post? Uh, no, I was, I was not able to join. Because of, fear, because of school fees, yeah. nobody was there to stand in for me. That's when my uncle in Dar es Salaam called me and told me, come visit me. That was, he feared the post-2007 post-election violence. So he told me, come over to Dar es Salaam before the results came out. So when it just came out, he told me, what did you score? Then I said a C plus. So he asked me, can you join a university or a college? Then I said, yes, I can join. He dropped out after first year due to lack of fees. Osea also secured admission at Glamorgan University in Wales, but he could not raise money for air ticket and institution fee. He traveled back to Kenya and later went to Kenya Medical Training College for admission. He had longed to become a pediatrician. Again, the school fees at KMTC was unmanageable. So because of the financial constraints, again, they were tired of me promising them every time I'll, I'll pay, I'll pay, I'll pay. Until two years and the balance was now huge, so I decided to drop had no option. So I came back to Kenya. I qualified to join the University of Glamorgan in Wales from six, from six. Yes, because I, I failed to join the University of Glamorgan in the UK, in Wales, so I decided to go to to many universities in Dar es Salaam. Yes. But I was, I was enrolled for the same course in uh, Wales. He later joined Kindu Adventist Hospital's medical school, where on November 8th, 2019, he graduated with a diploma in clinical medicine. He has been able to overcome many challenges to achieve this. He still wants to further his education and get to greater heights. I, uh, when I came back to Kenya, we sat down with my mother, tried to reason together, Mom, I'm thinking of joining a medical school. I want to become a clinical medicine person, as a clinical officer. She was very doubtful. She had nothing to say because she was asking me, do you have the money? I said, I don't have the money. And then who is, who is pushing you to go? And then nobody is pushing me to go. I said, I'm just, I just want to go. Then I said, watch me, I want to organize for fundraising. Then I will apply for, for a college. So I tried the KMTC, but KMTC Nairobi. I, tried, I went there personally, looked for an opportunity. I never got. There was no money. They wanted 100,000. I don't know that was for what. I could, have, I could have been very far. You, 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 no, I could be very far. So if I had that money by that time, then I, I think today I'll be sitting in high tables with the presidents. Yes, I'll, I'll be maybe could be called for such occasions to grace, to speak to students. I could be somebody great. Yeah, when I came to Kindu, after being referred by a friend who was also my teacher in high school, that is Mr. Robertus Muga, yes. So he directed me to this place, but I had no scent. I just believed that I'll be in class studying. <laughs> so I organized for fundraising after I had 500 shillings, my mom added me 1,000 for registration, which I went to pay at Shujamol KCB branch. That's for the account of the school. <laughs> so I paid I, I paid for that money there. The secretary emailed me admission letter because I could not come here and back again for me to access finances. So I tried to access different offices for these uh, prominent people in Kenya, but I could not access any. Everybody was just telling me, no, you have to have an appointment. You can't see the... I even one day opted to go to the state house. I went up to the gates and I said, can I continue? Then I, I said, no, let me just go back. So you went to the state house? I wanted to go to the state house. So I, I reached there, then I said, I could have just told the president I just want to go to school. Yes. Because that, that is what can help me. Yes. I know in Kenya we have got different bodies which 
actually deal with these cases. But accessing, accessing those places is so difficult. We even have different people who have been nominated in our parliaments to help or to represent the needs of, the, of people with disabilities. But they talk politics. Wherever they go to interviews, the TV, they, 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 they just speak, they speak politics. They don't speak any matters with the disability. So what I would like the president, I would like the president to check into this so that these bodies do their work. We hear that there are funds which are being given every budget. Whenever budget is being allocated, there is some money given for people with disabilities. We're not asking for you to give us that money, but uh, even if you can just access that there is somebody with a disability having difficulty in paying school fees in a particular place. I had there's someone also who sent me a text in, on Facebook and told me I have a, a son like you in Form 2 and uh, we have been trying to access this loan for people with disability for school fees but it has never worked. College has been tough when I started. It has been very tough when I started. In fact, I, I told you I organized for a fundraising but it only gave it it only gave fifteen thousand. It only gave fifteen thousand shillings, that fundraising which I organized. So I came with it, but the school fees in this place is so high. It's around one hundred and four thousand in first year, ninety six thousand in second year, one hundred and sixteen thousand in third year. And plus other living costs. Let me say for you to stay here and you finish in three years, or over 500,000. For me, I would like to thank so many people because everybody who has played a part in my life, even if that person gave me one shilling, even if it is five shillings, even if it is just a word of encouragement, that person played a very important role. Are there people you've never forgotten about? I can't forget about so many people. Just a few. There are so many people. And uh, first, uh, first and foremost, I would like to recognize Mr. Cohen from the US. He has been chipping in so much to help. Then, when did start paying school? actually, Cohen started pay, paying school fees whenever I reach him. When did he start? First year. In my first year, oh. second semester. I also would like to thank uh, Cohen. Works hand in hand with uh, somebody called Fred Afwai in Kitale. And also, I'd like to thank, uh, we have got uh, people from the U.S. like uh, Susie and Ole, who comes from Kakamega. Yes, yes, so she came and she actually took me in as her, her son. You know, when you have a problem, you can't rely on one person all the time. Yes, you can't keep on coming to Dickens, 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 no. Dickens can get tired of you. So when you ask Dickens this time, tomorrow you ask this person. So actually, that's how my life has been. Also, there's someone called Peter Omocheto. He's also in the U.S. So they've been chipping in here and there. Somebody will say, let me buy you lunch today. Somebody will say, let me, let me buy you supper today. Somebody says, let me buy you uniform. So, and so many of them, but somebody, some, some, there are so many and I can't mention. There are so many people whom I cannot mention. Do you know how much you've made them proud? I know wherever they are, they, they must be very, very happy. Yes, I can't also forget there's a, a doctor who normally comes here from Finland. Uh, I would like to appreciate everybody who has played a part. Nothing, somebody, whatever anybody gave, however, however small to that person it was, or however big that person it was, it has helped me somewhere. It has made me reach this far. And I, I still continue appreciating, and God should fill those places where those things came from. What are your future plans after graduating today? After graduating today, it is a, it is a routine for clinical officers council that we go for an internship. That's for one year. After that, you issued with your license, then you can now practice. I'll go ahead with learning when I have the opportunity to do so, when I have the support to do so, then I'll continue learning to, greater, to, to achieve greater heights in it academics. I'm not planning to stop here because I'm planning to reach far. But uh, just like uh, Jalango says, if you want to fail in life, eat at your mom's place, take a blank a mattress, then uh, put it, uh, take a, a duvet, a very heavy one. 
sleep there, then cover yourself. Then you'll be just be woken up. Food is here by the bedside. Just roll yourself, eat, and then go back. Yes, I have a fiancé. Let me say she's a fiancé. <laughs> I'm planning so. If God uh, blesses us, then uh, we are planning to get married. Uh, she's called Doreen. Yeah. Currently, she's taking uh, food and beverage production. She's studying at uh, ICS College in Nairobi. She's now in her first year, certificate level. We met back in school. That is at the children's home. We were all raised together at the orphanage. Yeah, but though she was younger than I was, yeah, so I was uh, I was seeing her there grow. So when I was in college, I met her again, and they said, well, uh, "Can we move together?" And then she accepted that we are moving together. The two things uh, that has uh, okay. What is so special about Doreen is that. She is one a lady who is very simple. She doesn't like big things. If you tell her I love you, that's enough for her. Whether you give her what you don't give her, that is that, that doesn't matter. And actually, she has been very supportive. Even at times when I call on her, I tell her I don't have money to eat. If she has hundred bob, she sends. If she has fifty, even if she has fifty bob, she will send it. Even if I will draw it at for as forty bob, yes. So she has given her life or herself to this relationship and she is ready to go with it. Yeah. She has not li she has not listened to anybody. His fiance Dorino Bayo is among those who have been able to provide great pillars for his support in his education journey. We were studying with Dosea in children's home, Magodo Children's Home. We we met but we were not that close. So we met I met Osea afterwards. After he was done with his, with school, I met him in face, Facebook, started communicating, and therefore I became his fiance. Yeah, he's a gentleman, he's a kind man. I love him more because he's always listening to what I say, and he's, he's more than a gentleman. That's what I can say, yeah. Thank you so much. I want to remind you that you are a charismatic person. You have a lot to achieve in life. And I want to assure you, the same person that I knew back in 2007 shall continue to be the same person. You have a long way to go. And I know you will uh, achieve the goals that you desire to achieve in life. I would like to con congratulate him for the great achievement. And I would also like to appreciate the hard work that he had since uh, the beginning of this journey. I would also like to thank all who have supported him through all this. And uh, I would just like to continue encouraging him to work harder so that he can achieve more. Thank you. Thanks. Steve, I've known him for quite some time. Huh? When I joined high school where he used to school, he was the first person who put me to the school prefect body. Yeah. So he was a, an energetic person. No, no. He liked to be in debates. Sometimes he would give me tips that I should go and propose his motion. And that's where we came to know each other. For me, one thing is that he's such an encouragement to many people. It's not easy for the mileage that he has come. And that's why we had to travel all the way. It's not that we didn't have so much and other commitments, but I had to come and witness this because to us it's, it serves as a testimony to people and the likes of him. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. For Nation Digital, I'm Dickens Ngichow.